in the sophomore year for the Toyota Cross. The 2023 will add a hybrid that has almost 200 horsepower, so a little bit more motivation. We have the L and Celestite Gray here at Toyota of Wesley Chapel. Right off the bat, LED headlamps and daytime runnings are standard. LE gets projected, XLE will get LED fog lamps and turn signals. The grille will have the gloss black to surround it with the mesh inserts that bulge out. And it's a more boxy structure, which is fit for the times. And the cool thing about the Cross opposed to the Corolla, it's an SUV, 8.1 inches of clearance. Because this is the L, we don't get any rims. We get hubcaps, which you have to go to the LE or the XLE in order to get actual rims. Here, I feel they could have done something a little bit better. Maybe give us a smaller rim so we don't have hubcaps because this is the 21st century. Matte black will surround the fenders. And if you notice, the front, you have about a two to three inch gap between it but they match it all the way into the rear. The side rockers flare out. The XEL is gonna get chrome around the window treatment. Either way, we get the Corolla Cross badging in the back with the gloss black. Side view mirror caps, you got that material that's more or less scratch resistant. I kinda like this. The Cross also adds this four inch long piece of matte black between the A-pillars and the fender. And one reason why they do that is because this piece is all one. So for accident purposes, it's a little bit easier to replace. Also, the windscreen is longer than the Corolla. Therefore, they have to add that piece. Keeping the same structure or aerodynamic lines as the RAV4, a lower roof spoiler, shark fan antenna in the matte black. LED taillights are standard. When you get into the XLE, turn signals. 1,500 pounds of towing is standard. Standard across all the trims for non-hybrids. 2.0, four-cylinder, 169 horsepower, 151 pound-feet of torque paired to a continuously variable automatic transmission or a CVT, achieving 31 to 33 MPGs, which is great because this is an SUV, but it was a car that's picked up giving us more interior space, which you're gonna see. Non-power liftgate, Going inside, 24 cubic feet of storage with storage nooks on both sides. Underneath the floor is gonna get your spare tire and jack. And you got little compartments on the side here. You also have where you can put two kilograms of baggage on the side. Split fold the rear bench at a 40-60 split. That increases the cargo to 68 cubic feet. You will have this lip right in here that kind of cuts about six to eight inches. Going inside the Corolla Cross, over eight inches of clearance, which is a good thing, but it's not a push start when you get the LE. So that's the key fob. Headroom at 38.6 inches, legroom at 41.8 inches, six-way manual adjustment for the driver, four-way manual adjustment for the passenger. With a fabric interior that will be standard, not a big fan of this area here, because every time I come in, I actually kick it. Satin aluminum and gloss black for the dashboard that puts a two-part or two-tier design layout. Flat otherwise on the top, the air vent bulges out on the driver's side, and it keeps it pretty settled for the size of the interior with a climate control, eight-inch multimedia touchscreen. We have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Wi-Fi hotspot, Put it into reverse. We have a reverse camera. The lines do not move, but at least it covers the whole screen. Working underneath with a single USB. Area that you could put your smartphone or upgrade to a wireless charger. Leather around the gear lever with the gloss black in that pattern. And it also closes off that storage area there. You have an auto hold, the key fob for the new Corolla Cross, cup holders, and you have a little divider part here. Open up inside and you have a 12 volt with a USB and this thing doesn't like to stay open as you can notice. It's going to be soft to ride because of the fabric material. Three spoke steering wheel, multi-function. The gauge cluster gets a TFT display in the center for the adaptive cruise control, your audio sound system, different settings for the vehicle. 
the dashboard and the door panel integrate seamlessly. And you have the little Prius window right here to give you more visibility opening up to everyday materials pretty much everywhere except for where you rest your arms. One touch up and down only for the driver window. The satin aluminum comes around making that boomerang look. And I like how it kind of comes out a bit. So it gives a sporty style. The door pocket can fit a bottle or beverage holder right in here or a medium sized flask. For the back seat, it's gonna be a little bit tight, but headroom, 39 inches, it's not tight at all. But the leg space, 32 inches. No armrest, air vents in the center, no charging port storage behind the passenger seat. The door panel is gonna have the same everyday materials found that's in the front and just a soft for your elbows or armrests. One beverage holder in the front. Sitting into the center, headroom is still not an issue, but leg space, feet space, butt space, shoulder space, pretty much everything is when you have to put a six foot three person in the center of the Corolla Cross. It's a smaller SUV, so you're gonna expect it to be tight just for the feet area. The tracks really is the problem. Maybe if they made the dash a little bit smaller, they could have moved up a couple of inches so that way my feet wouldn't be faced like this. Four cylinder, 2.0 liter, standard with 169 horsepower, 151 pound feet of torque. You're under 3,100 pounds. And when you go to the XLE, it's under 3,200 pounds. So you don't really add a lot of weight for the goodies that you get. And I mean, I hate to say it, but I probably would option this as an XLE because you get all the bells and whistles for the interior and on the exterior. The new hybrid, almost 200 horsepower, zero to 60, you're not looking to be motivated. This is gonna be around nine, maybe 10 seconds. It's not gonna be the fastest vehicle, but for an everyday drive, that's what this is. A Corolla that's picked up over eight inches of clearance. It's longer, you get more cargo space, and you have a little bit more interior space over 175 inches. So it's not necessarily a huge difference, but every little bit counts when you're looking at a Corolla. Give her a little go. going to be a little bit more noisy than the standard Corolla. The SUV is picked up, so you're gonna expect that also. The ride though, it's an independent strut front suspension, multi-link rear suspension setup, so it is pretty comfortable for the most part. You will just kind of glide over the road. The steering wheel has a little bit of weight to it, but it is pretty light in the sense of an everyday drive. Visibility is good because the windscreen is larger than your Corolla sedan. I mean, I think it's a pretty practical vehicle and that's gonna take me to some things I like and dislike and that's what we're gonna start talking about. One thing that I like a lot is that you can option the Corolla or the Cross and it's only around $1,500 difference. Usually, when you're looking to get from a sedan to a SUV, the price point jumps tremendous. Taking me to the next thing that I like, even though it's not a lot, you still have more interior space, especially for cargo capacity, which makes this kind of one of those sweet spots for Toyota. The last thing is you have a lot more leg space in the front than the sedan. So again, it's just really pushing me more towards an SUV and that's the times that we're in. Three things that I dislike though, starts off with the seat tracks for the front. When I'm getting out, I hit them every single time. When I'm in the back seat, you're gonna be playing footsie if someone's sitting in the center and if you're sitting by yourself on the side, you'll still be kind of moving around a bit because they just come back a little bit too much. The next thing I dislike will have to be those hubcaps in the 21st century. I don't understand why they even offer that. Taking me to the last thing, this doesn't have push start for the base L, which I get it, but still. We have to move with today's times and it's decent price, but still. Turn radius is gonna be about two lanes. Let's rock and roll. Now this is not gonna feel sporty like the hatch, so don't even consider that. The hatch is a very sporty, athletic look even on the exterior, and the drive feels that way even though it's not so fast. But what you're getting here is pretty decent gas consumptions, and it's not a huge price increase from the sedan. The new hybrid 
that's obviously going to be a little bit more power, but it's still not gonna be something that's gonna put this on a track. So don't expect that. You're really just looking for an everyday use vehicle, and that's what you're getting. If you want all the bells and whistles, unfortunately, you would have to go to the top tier in order to get them. But the nice thing here is they're not forcing you to go into a hybrid in order to receive them similar to like the Honda line. The adaptive cruise control and lane keep assist works pretty much the standard across the board. So about 0.2 to 0.3 miles, nothing necessarily revolutionary. If you want to check out my Instagram or Facebook, I put it on the reels and sometimes I do uh, YouTube shorts to show the demonstration of how it actually performs, but it's not something that's over the top. I do like that we have it, you're gonna be continuously touching the steering wheel. It has Toyota Safety Sense 3.0, so the latest technology. I mean, you have adaptive cruise control, and at a price point that's around $25,000, it's really hard to get some of these features. And I say that a lot on my reviews, but I'm just really expressing for this tier of a vehicle. When you look at any rivals, once you start adding some of these features, it really does escalate to a $30,000 price point. So you can start seeing savings when you get into the Toyota Cross. I'd like to thank Toyota of Wesley Chapel for giving us this 2023 Toyota Corolla Cross L for our car review. If you're already a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Hawkeye community. If not, I don't know what you're waiting for. Click the next video in the subscribe button. Check out the merchandise website, Instagram. Leave a comment and a like.